So far we've looked at really a couple of different techniques to um, implement mobile websites. One of the techniques we talked about was responsive adaptive. That in a nutshell, and again, knowing that we can mix and match these techniques, but that in a nutshell is having a page that adjusts itself, adapts itself to its environment. Specifically screen size. So we did all kinds of sorts of things uh, along that line, like in the first chapter we used relative, um, not relative positioning, but um, we used uh, percentages for sizing and we used uh, media queries to, to tell what CSS to apply. We used um, sort of the mobile first uh, progressive enhancement ideology where we first had a style sheet that did the very basic bare bones and then we added it. Uh, added to it a, a style sheet for maybe a more um, robust display, like a, a desktop environment. But that was done mostly through just plain old HTML and CSS that was adaptive and applying certain techniques. The web server in these examples was just delivering one page. All right. The second approach that we had was to take and create two pages or two sites, a separate mobile site versus the full site. And as we're looking at this, the advantage of that is, is we can make the page optimized for the particular kind of device or, or environment that it's in. And when we say that, really sort of the difference between these two is this for the most part is focusing on appearance. Now you can do some things, you can hide things via CSS and so on, but for the most part this relates to appearance where for the most part here you're talking about content. All right. In other words, the thought is, is that someone coming to a mobile version of a site is apt to have different goals and as such should be given some different content than if they go to the full site. Now we found ways that we can use include files to sort of mitigate the fact that we now have twice as much work to do. We now have to maintain two sites instead of one site. All right. And we use the server in helping us out here because the server is, is, is deciding which of the two pages the, pers uh, the person that makes the request is going to get. Are they going to get the mobile or are they going to get the full version? And there's a little bit of detection at the beginning of the page um, that uh, determines which one they get. So we've had responsive pages that was done largely through CSS and media queries. We had having two separate sites, two separate pages or sites, and that was involved via redirection through the web server based on the user agent. I'm not really sure what to call the third alternative. I'll call it a dynamic page based on device. Now we've talked about dynamic pages before. I, I think in most of my classes I at least mention them. And a dynamic page is a page that isn't the same every time. All right. If I go and Google a term, I think I went over this example in this class, but if I were to Google, say, Italian restaurant, lo and behold, we get Italian restaurants that are in this area. In fact, if you notice, you know, the ones that it picks to put on the top are um, 
very close to this area. It's one just up on Abbey and so on down the line. This is an example of a dynamic page because if someone in Rome were to go to Google and Google Italian restaurants, they're not going to get the list of these in, in Illyria. Someone in New York City, San Francisco, wherever. The results are localized. In other words, this page, the code for Google search, isn't a completed web page. That's absurd on the face of it, right? You couldn't possibly have a completed web page out there for everything that people could humanly possibly search for, right? That, that's absurd to even think about it, all right? This page then is generated on the fly, and it takes a number of ingredients to generate this. What ingredients does it take? Well, it takes the term that I put in. If I typed in Greek restaurants, let's say, instead of Italian restaurants, it would give me a different list of restaurants. If I was physically located somewhere else, it would give me a different list of restaurants. All right? So it takes all these ingredients and combines them together to come up with a web page just for me and just on my request. You know, if we had someone else looking at this in another city, they'd see a different page. If we come back two weeks from now and do this exact same query, in the meantime, you know, restaurants are liable to open and close, and who knows, we might get a different set of lists. So a dynamic page is a page where it's written via server-side scripting, and it's not a completed web page, but it's a recipe for a web page. In other words, the web server takes information from the client request and that could include the data that they enter in forms, that can include information about their IP address which can be useful in determining where the person is, time of day, and there are scripts or instructions which interact with the database. And the result is, is that an HTML document gets generated and delivered to the user. That's custom for their request. This is a basic dynamic web page. If we think about this for a second, we should be able to add something in this recipe to take into account the device that they're on. All right? And that's what we're going to do. We're now going to write code, dynamic code, server-side code, so we're going to be using PHP. And again, this class isn't meant to make you a PHP ex expert, but we've studied a few basic things. And we're going to study you know, a few more. One of the ingredients we're going to take is that user agent. Now we've seen the user agent before, right? We've seen the user agent when we talk about redirecting from page one to page two. You know, if, if they visit the site, they get sent to the mobile site or they get sent to the full version of the site. We're now going to use that user agent not to redirect people, all right, but to find out a little something about the environment that they're running in. And we're going to take that and use it in preparing the, uh, use that in preparing or creating the web page. So, we've already seen how to use the user agent in server side scripting. We're just going to do more with it. So that brings us to two alternatives if we choose the path not of a responsive site, all right, where one page by itself does everything, but if we talk about wanting to have separate mobile content, all right, we could probably do some minor differences through responsiveness, like hiding some things and so on. But if it's a significant enough of a difference, we can either have a redirect to send people to the full versus mobile, or I can write one page that's dynamic and it takes into account the user agent. 
Just like Google takes into account the physical location of me. We're going to take into account the, vi uh, the user agent and do different things if we're on a mobile device versus on a full device. In other words, this page will, be, will have code both for the full version and for the mobile version. Essentially, instead of having two simple pages, we're going to have one complicated page. Is that better? I don't know. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's better to deal with two things provided they're each simple enough. Generally speaking, as programmers, we like to deal with one thing. We only we like to have, if we have a change, make it in one place. But if that one thing becomes gigantic or mammoth, then we might be better off with two simple things. Again, keep in mind this is another tool that you're going to have in your toolbox. All right. So how are we going to go about doing this? Well, we're going to do this in an evolutionary way. We're going to start off with a very simple, straightforward example. All right. Where I'm going to take a web page, I'm going to make a web page that's going to display different stuff depending on whether they're the full site or uh, a mobile site. So let's go here. Let me start up my web server. And let me go. Let's see what I have out here. All right, I do not want that, so I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to download the one example from Angel. Actually, I'm going to download. I'm just going to grab one file from it just because I'm lazy. And the file that I'm going to grab from it is the file that we've used in our previous examples that cares about the user agent. In other words, what I'm doing at this point is I'm going to make this web page care about the user agent and handle different user agents differently. Okay? What page have we had so far? What example have we had so far of a page that cared about the user agent? Which of the pages up there in that diagram cared about the user agent? The redirect page. So I'm going to copy that index.php that just did the redirection. And I'm going to tweak it. Because I'm lazy and I don't like to type code. And I type real slow to begin with. So... I'm going to be interested in is this index.php. I'm going to copy it into here and I'm going to edit it.
Okay, what am I missing? I did copy index PHP to the desktop. Maybe I didn't. There we go. go. Let's save it. Then I'm going to open up a notepad. All right. Now if we look at this, we'll see a big chunk of code that again, I, I pulled from the website Detect Mobile Browsers. And what this does is this grabs the user agent it does all this test, and the way we've been using it before is we have been uh, using it to redirect one place or another. We're not going to redirect anymore. All right? This is logic I'm going to incorporate in every single one of my pages. All right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a PHP variable that says whether I'm on a mobile site or whether I'm on the full site whether I'm using a mobile device or whether I uh, am, am using a desktop and, and, I are on the, the, and need to see the full site. So instead of redirecting them to mobile or full, I'm going to set a variable called device class, we'll call it, equals mobile. Actually, I'll do this. is mobile. And I'll set that equal to true. Otherwise, I'm going to set the value of is mobile to false. Here's the thing about PHP variables. There's really no way to declare them. In other programming languages, you declare a variable as maybe a string or an integer or a boolean. Even in JavaScript, you can declare variables without giving them a type. Here, you don't declare variables at all. You just start using it. All right? So, does it, does it matter that I haven't declared these variables as Booleans or anything? I'm starting to use them, and I'm using them as a, bool a Boolean. Therefore, that's what I'm going to get. All right? Now, if we think about this for a second, if we're going to take the strategy of having a web page, having a single web page that satisfies both the full and the mobile, but dynamically generating that web page as opposed to having a static HTML page, having a dynamic page, this is something we're going to want to do on every single page, right? Not just the home page, because we're not redirecting them to the mobile and then they stay in that mobile, mobile folder. We only have one set of files, and every file needs to know whether it needs, whether the user needs to see the full page or just the mobile page. So I'm going to go and I'm going to put this in an, in, in an include file. So I'll go and I'll save that as UserAgent.inc. So now every page that I create, I'm going to include that UserAgent.inc at the top of it. And on every page going forward, all right, we're going to know which, or or if we put this in, in the top of the include file, we're going to know which environment we're in, and therefore whether to display the mobile or the full version. Let me go and let me actually copy the rest of the zip file. I thought I only wanted the one file. I do believe I want... all of these. So let me... 
Let me take the includes folder. And let me take from the full version the members um, credits and index. So I'm going to copy all this over and I probably need the images as well. And the CSS. All right. So, what I have now, if I go to my local host, we'll see it should look suspiciously like the full version of the site. Oh, but I don't have an index. Let me go and grab the index out of the full. So now if we go and view this, um, we are missing some include files, so we'll have to go and change that. Our include files are, are in a different position. So let me go in here and edit those. to look for the include files in the right place. All right, let's save it. All right, there we go. That's how our full version of the home page looked before. All right. And we got redirected to this and we stayed in that full folder and we were able to see the full site. Now what I want to do is I want to put some browser detection because what was the difference between the full and the desktop? Or the full and the... Um, mobile version. Let's bring up the mobile version on the phone here. The mobile version, if we look at it, knows it has a different style sheet. All right. It has the links that the other one does. But there's only one paragraph worth of content, and that's probably the most significant thing. All right. If we look at, uh, and there's no video. All right. If we notice on the full site, there's video, and there's one paragraph of uh, content only on the mobile where there's three in there. So let's go and let's make this work. All right, so that we can replicate this look, the look that we're getting on the mobile, but using one PHP page as opposed to two PHP pages where we redirect. And the way we're going to do that is this. I'm going to put my user agent include at the very top of my page.
I'll move it in where the rest of them are now. So now this page has at the very top the user agent include, which means because of that, I know that at this point, Anywhere after here, I can test the is mobile Boolean. All right? Because I have that include up there. And that include sets the is mobile Boolean. I'm going to actually do one better. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to set the is mobile and I'm going to set a is full. Variable as well. That is just the opposite. So now, I have anywhere in my PHP code, I have access to two variables, is mobile and is full. And I can then test in PHP to decide if I want to include that code or not for this particular request. All right? So, for example, This overview 2, all right, that is what this second bit of content is. I only want that to appear if we're in full mode, okay? So what I'll do is I'll wrap this include in an if statement. that will say if is mobile, no, if is full, then I want to include that file. Otherwise, I don't include it. Okay? So in the previous version, we just looked to see if it was mobile or full and then shot them on their way to a, a, a folder where everything was set up for the full or everything was set up for the mobile. Here, throughout the page, we can test to see what their device is, whether they're on a full device or whether they are on a mobile device. And based on that, we can decide what content to show or not show. All right. Likewise, this video. We only want to show this video on the full site. So what I can do is I can pop into PHP mode. I can put the first start of an if statement here. I can get out of PHP mode. And then I can go in and close the if statement. Let's refresh our memory the way that if statements work in PHP. If statements start with the word if. And we're going to examine a condition that could either be true or false, one or the other. Now, sometimes we compare two things. Like we might say if x is equal to 0, or if y is greater than 5, or something like that. In this case, we're simply evaluating whether this variable has a value of true or false. It's a Boolean, right? We set that is full to either true or false. 
So, I could say if is full equals true. You're not seeing double, despite it being the day after daylight savings time. There are, there are two equal signs there. Two equal signs are used for comparison. A single equal sign is used to assign a value. If you remember in our include file, I said something like full equals true, or is full equals true, and I only had a single equal sign. When you only have a single equal sign, you're doing an assignment. You're saying this, I want to take this value and stuff it in this variable. Here I'm not doing that, I'm doing a comparison. All right, I'm testing to see if is full is true. Whatever was within the parentheses has to be an expression that translates to either a true or a false, right? Because we're going to do it if it's true, we're not going to do it if it's false. Since is full is already a Boolean, it already has a value of true or false, we don't even have to say if equals true. We can simply say if is full. If it's true, then we execute the statements between the curly brackets. If not, then we don't. Optionally, we can have an else statement in here to, if we wanted to do something uh, for not the full site. That might actually be good to do for this video. Maybe on a mobile site, we'll give the user a link to the video as opposed to embedding the video on the page. That might be a, a better approach. All right. Now, here's what gets confusing the first few times you see it. Notice that our if statement is spread between two PHP blocks. We go into PHP mode and we start our if statement. We then have a chunk of HTML and then we go into PHP again to end our if statement. All right. In other words, that bracket matches up with that if statement. All right. We can pop in and out of PHP mode as often as we want. And that's, you know, that's the good news and that's the bad news. The good news is we can do it. That gives us tons of flexibility. So, for example, here we go into our PHP. If this condition is true, we want to output this HTML. And we can pop back and forth out and, and do all kinds of other things between PHP and HTML. The downside of it is it can be very, very, very confusing. All right? It can be confusing because if there's a big chunk of, X, of, of HTML, rather, it's hard to see exactly what or, or where, rather, the ending bracket matches up with the starting if statement. But this is all one if statement, all right? Even though it's spread between two PHP blocks. It's nice up here, and this is another reason for include files. This kind of thing makes the code a little cleaner, right? Because I don't have to pop back and forth between PHP and HTML. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to give the user a link on the mobile version Please of the site. The modern jazz. So let me grab the URL. And what I'm going to say here is else. Again, it can be real easy to lose track when you get in the code like this because we have the start of our if statement. If that condition is true, we have a chunk of HTML that gets displayed. Otherwise, we have a different chunk of HTML that gets displayed, and then finally we close the if statement. PHP allows you to do that. It doesn't care. You can do that, and, and that, again, can be extremely flexible, but it 
it also can lead to code that's very hard to read. So good programming practices, breaking things down into functions, putting things in include files, code and in include files, all those things can, can help quite a bit. This, I guess, is not too hard to read. What I would define code that's hard to read is when you have to scroll and scroll and scroll to see the start and end of a block of something. That's when it gets hard to read. Here, even at my bigger font, I can see the whole if statement on one screen. So that's not too bad a code. All right. Now, let's test to see how this works. Let's test to see if it, if it works. All right, full version still works. All right, if we look at the HTML it got generated, it generated the right HTML. How are we gonna test the mobile version? <laughs> We're kinda out of luck, right? Unless we do one of two things. And one of them is a quick and dirty way to do it, but you just gotta be careful that you don't mess up somehow. One way, of course, would be to have a web server, put it on the web server, then access this page from a mobile device. We'll do that in a minute, all right? Just to show a, 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 a good, more complete way to do it. And ultimately, you should do that, all right? Um, I guess another way would be to try the emulator. I just thought of that. I forgot we have that loaded here. Let's fire up the emulator and see what we get. All right. Well, it worked. Kind of. All right. Um, our CSS may not be exactly where we want it to be, but we're only seeing the one paragraph of the data, and we're not seeing the video at all. I forgot we had the emulator. I guess, I guess that saves us from having to upload it to a server. The other way, that you got to be real careful that you don't mess this up, but the other thing that you could do is I could write code in here to fake it out and pretend I'm on a mobile device simply by saying is mobile equals true is full equals false. So if you're working in an environment where you don't have the emulator, let's say, or you don't have a mobile device handy, handy you can always fake it out all right, in, in hard code values just to test. Then when I do that, I can see how it would look like on a mobile device, even though I'm not running a mobile emulator or... Okay. It's doing some of it, but the, it is showing it uh, only the one uh, paragraph of content, uh, content, and it's not showing the video, but it is uh, showing the background because that I did not put in an if statement. That was simply using the responsive technique. So it, it uh, applies the, the bigger, fancier um, CSS. Pardon me? For the CSS. For the CSS, yeah. I could go back and do that if I wanted to. I could wrap this CSS code and not do... and not do uh, a media query. That would have the benefit of I could get rid of my funky IE cat, uh, uh, hack. And I could go and say If full, then I'm going to include that link. And 
and when I have to use a media query. All right. And now if I went and viewed this in the desktop browser, even IE, Pardon me? Yeah, I, I actually forgot to. And my if. Yeah. All right. There we go. And even, even uh, on that, we can... Um, we, we can see because we faked it out. The advantage of this is I'm taking control on the server and I'm pumping out the HTML for either the full or the mobile and I don't have to depend on any like browser incompatibilities or anything along those lines. All right. I don't have to depend on the fact or I don't have to worry about the fact that IE doesn't support media queries. All right, why? Well, because if I if identified myself as being on a full site, I send the HTML uh, that includes all the CSS that I want. So I can go in here and let's go and take my little dummy test code out. And now even though I don't have the fix, actually I need the one fix, I need the HTML shim. I don't need the other one. So I need the HTML shiv. I don't need um, the CSS code duplicated here. All right, now if we go and look, the fool looks back the way it was. I do have to put that in here because, again, that has nothing to do with my code. This has everything to do with the fact that um, HTML or, or uh, IE does not support um, um, HTML5 elements. I am missing something on the end of this. Let me go and fix that. I'm missing the end diff. That can be a very reasonable approach if you're tired with the tired of dealing with uh, the browser issues of just having the server be cognizant and only sending the HTML that you want to send down, um, as opposed to the fact that well HTML uh, or uh, IE earlier versions don't support media queries. Fine, we'll get rid of the media queries and we'll use our server side code to identify who gets what style sheet. All right, questions about this. Just for completeness, I want to load this up too so we can test on an actual mobile device. So let me go and I'm going to upload this to our server, which seems like we can FTP to it now. I know there were some problems with it um, last week or the week before. But I can FTP to cissql.lorraineccc.edu and log in. What I'm going to do is I'll put this in this folder and I'll create a new folder called mjq2 and I'll copy all these guys 
up into it. We should now be able to access this from the server by going to CISSQL, CISS2 CISS268, MJQ2, index.php. And I'll bet you I saved an earlier version of that. We'll leave it like that, though. I won't go back and fix it. I probably forgot the HTML5 shiv. Uh, now I go, though, and I can access it from the mobile device. And again, on the mobile device, it looks like that. Now, this is only one piece of, of this, all right? We could do uh, a lot more. Um, let's go in and let's look at, I'm going to keep my FTP connection open, and then we'll go and... We'll talk about what we could do um, so if you remember. In the example that we had for this before, Our mobile code was using the jQuery mobile framework. All right. So I'm going to go and put some of this code into my index file here. put the code in for the viewport, which was missing from the main. That will make it scale a little better. All right. I'm then going to copy from here these three things, which relate to the jQuery mobile stuff. So I'll go and I'll copy that.
in here. I don't always want this to appear. I only want this to appear if it's not the full site. So I'm going to add another else statement. And I'll put the jQuery mobile stuff in here as part of the else statement for the test up here to see if it's full. So the full version of the site, I get the enhanced CSS. Otherwise, I get this chunk of code, which is the jQuery mobile stuff. Now I'll save it and let me re-upload that. And now when I go and view it on the mobile device, I now have the jQuery mobile. Look for it. Almost. I'm missing those uh, buttons probably because I did not put the data roll of list view on that guy. So I could go back in and make that change. That change is actually, I believe, in the include file for links. So I need to go and make that there. I can go save that. And Now I should have it the way that I want to. And sure enough, I do. All right. So I hope you can get an appreciation of the dilemma, all right, with this. You have two choices when you want to have a separate mobile versus full version. You have two simple web pages that a redirect page sends the user to one or the other. Or we have one complicated page that does everything and handles everything. I mean, I can't say which one is always going to be better. Um, if there was drastic enough differences, I might say, okay, let's just make it two simple pages. Part of it could even depend on the workflow within your organization. It may be that one person is doing the, is the jQuery mobile expert and they're doing the, the mobile development. Uh, in which case, yeah, maybe you want to do two separate ones. But everything else equal, um, you need to look at the individual case and, and determine um, is it better to have one more complicated page or two simpler pages that get redirected to. All right. So this is sort of a third way that we can uh, accomplish this. Now, this is a really good segue into our next step. And I've uploaded some code and I'm not sure if I'll have a chance to take a look at that code today or not, but if not, we'll look at it uh, next time. And that is really the test to determine, right now, we're looking at the user agent and we are coming up with a decision whether it's mobile or full. All right. Really, the, device, the, 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 the possible range of devices seem a lot more diverse than that, right? For one thing, you have phones versus tablets. They're both mobile devices, but 
A phone is different than a tablet. You also have flip phones versus smartphones. All right. So far, we've been mainly concerned about mobile devices because mobile devices typically have a smaller screen. So we want to make our pages simpler and so on. But really, there's some additional functionality in mobile devices that don't exist in uh, desktop environments that we want to possibly be able to take advantage to it. All right? And really develop a true mobile application instead of just sort of porting our web page from uh, the full version to a desktop version. For example, all right, LC could have a mobile application or could have a mobile website that had a map. All right, and if you're viewing that from your phone, if you're still lost, even with the map, all right, you could press a button and call security. All right? You have a phone. You should be able to make a phone call from it, right? That's certainly functionality that you're not likely to want even or need on a desktop environment. You know, you can't call someone from your desktop computer. Not through a standard phone, anyhow. Um, there, there obviously are uh, techniques that you can call someone. But if you have a phone, why not incorporate the ability to call someone right within the web page? Not where they have to go somewhere else or click this or whatever. Just right within the web page, if they click a link, that they can go and do that. Now that goes beyond simply knowing whether you're on a mobile device or on a desktop. That's looking to see if your device has certain capabilities. So it's a more detailed look at the user agent. So far our look at the user agent has been very simple to say mobile desktop. We use that little snippet of script that we put on there. We put that on the top of our page and we can tell mobile or desktop. Now we're going to go and we're going to use a database that contains tons of information about all the devices that we could possibly be using. Why are we going to use a database? Well, we're going to let someone else do the hard work. All right? We don't have time to keep track of all the new mobile devices that come out and which ones are phones and which ones are tablets and which ones you can make phone calls to and what the screen size for is for all these guys, etc. So we're going to use a built-in database that goes beyond simply knowing whether it's mobile or desktop and gets into the capabilities of it. We can then finer tune our web pages so that we're not just doing the binary mobile full, but we can go and we can add functionality in as we know more about the capabilities of the device. In the textbook, the example that they go over in, in the chapter that deals with this, the Werfel chapter, all right, it talks about having slight variations of the page for low-end mobile, mobile users, for high-end mobile users, and for a desktop. So if someone has a flip phone, they get one page. Someone has a, uh, a, you know, a smartphone, they get another page. Someone has a tablet even, they could get a third page, finally someone on a desktop can get a fourth. Now we could do some of that before with our CSS media queries, we could do some of that before, but we can do a lot more of it now because we're going to have a database where we can access and know a lot of stuff about the device. All right, And we can ask that database, is the device I'm on, does it have a phone or not? Can I make phone calls from it? What I want to do is I want to show you uh, an example. We'll look at a, at least one example of this today. And I want to pull up the same web page both on the desktop and on my mobile device.
think it's called example. All right. We're on a desktop device. Obviously doesn't have a phone or so, uh, attached to it. Therefore, I have the text that says, call me at 440-366-4796. Let's access that exact same page from our mobile device. And look what we have. We don't have simply a text of a link. We actually have, or, or the text that says call me, we actually have a link. That if you press that link, it will go and it will make a phone call on the phone. Now this phone isn't activated, so it, it, the phone call won't go through, but we can see it start to dial it, or try to dial it. So if I go and I click this link, it's over to the phone. I hit that to dial. Now it's telling me my phone isn't activated. But it was going to call me if it could. And if I brought up my phone, I could actually call me. Let's see, do I have my phone here? It's going to moan at me for the next half hour then. I better hang up. Let's open up my web browser. Let's bring up the example, not that one. There's the call me link. Hit it. It's actually going ahead and calling me. And it's telling me that I'm not here. I'm teaching class. Okay. All right. This should be, how do I want to say it? This should be, a, again, a, a revelation because we can now look at and inquire what the capabilities of the device are and make our code that we send to the client custom depending on the capabilities of their phone. All right, that's a big deal, you know. We really want to go and our mobile websites, we want to truly be mobile. We want them to take advantage of all the capabilities that exist within a mobile device. All right, we don't want them simply to be mini desktop versions, right? So we talked a little bit about the fact that people have different goals and you might want to have a different page because someone walking around surfing uh, your site on a mobile device is going to have different goals. That's true. They also have a device that has different capabilities. All right? And we really want to take advantage of the capabilities. What are some capabilities that a mobile device has that a desktop won't likely have? GPS. GPS. That's a great one. And we'll be getting into examples from that uh, going forward. Um, a desktop computer, it generally can only tell me where I am. It can give me a good guess of where it thinks I am. It can take the IP address. It can look, can look up what internet service provider provided that IP address and can kind of figure out where I am. But every once in a while, it gets it wrong. All right? I remember back when I used to have Century Telephone that, uh, you know, is up here, but their headquarters are somewhere in Louisiana or something, or some of their things are in Louisiana. It would periodically identify me as going, being from Louisiana, 
you know, so when I did searches, they wouldn't be localized correctly. Simply because the IP address wasn't associated with the right branch of Century or whatever. All right. A GPS, though, that's going to tell you where you are pinpointed to, you know, the square foot probably. You know, it's going to tell you a very accurate, give you very accurate information of where you are. Most of the time with a desktop device, that's not, a desktop web browsing, that's not terribly important where you are. All right. Yeah, maybe it's important to know where you are as far as what city you're in, but it's not really important to know exactly where you are. But think, again, using a mobile web application. All right. Think of someone walking around on campus looking for the Spitzer building. All right. You can have a map. That's fine if you can sort of decipher the map. But if there was a little bleep on there that told you where you were, all right, and as you walked, are you getting closer or are you getting farther away, that would take that from just a, a, a flat static map that might be useful to something that's really, really useful and something that really takes advantage of the full range of the mobile device's capability. So we want to go beyond simply thinking of the mobile as a little desktop. All right? And we do that by number one, realizing that mobile users have different goals than their desktop counterparts. And secondly, realizing that the device itself has different capabilities. And we can harness those capabilities and make things a lot more effective. All right? Make a, a truly good that services the needs of, of mobile users as opposed to just replicating a desktop experience. So the technology that does this, there's, there's one of the technologies that does this is called Werfel. And we'll talk about that next time. Essentially, Werfel is something that you download, and it consists of a couple of things. It consists of a repository that's continually updated as far as new devices coming out that sort of saves you that potential problem. And it contains uh, code that allows you to write and incorporate into your PHP code uh, calls to, uh, to their libraries so that you can determine, hey, is this a phone? What's the maximum screen width? And so on and so forth. So that's what we'll look at next time. Questions about any of this? Alrighty. Anyone go in the lab? Alright, we'll see you.